Hello, welcome to Social Media Quick Start Training Part 1. My name is Evan Dean and I'm the Digital Communications Manager here at NARF. Today I'll be answering the questions, what is social media and why should you use it? I'll be going over how to create a personal account on Facebook and Twitter. We'll talk about what hashtags are and why you should use them. And we'll also go over building a Facebook page for your chapter or federation. Lastly, we'll talk about some basic social media etiquette. So what is social media? It's a form of electronic communication, just like a text message or an email, but it's unique in that its users create communities online to share their information, ideas, and messages. Users often share other content like photos and videos as well. Facebook is the largest social media platform in the world with 2.8 billion daily users worldwide and 190 million of those in the United States. 60% of baby boomers, 70% of Gen Xers, and 80% of millennials use Facebook. And the number of older users has been growing quite rapidly over the last few years. On Facebook, posts that include images get the most engagement, followed by posts with videos. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this is a Facebook post. At the top, you'll find the post text, and you can see here that I've included a short link which is basically a longer link from our website that's been put through an online service to shorten it for use in social media. In the middle, you'll find the media, which could be anything from a graphic like this, a photo, a video, or even a link preview. At the bottom, you'll find the engagement bar. Here, you can like or react to a post, comment on a post, or share a post to your own page. Now we'll talk about Twitter. Twitter has a 199 million active daily users worldwide with 73 million of those in the US. And those users tweet out 500 million tweets per day. 20% of US adults use Twitter and 55% of those users are between 25 and 50 years old, a key demographic for NAR. On Twitter, Posts with videos are six times as likely to get retweeted, which is the Twitter word for share, than posts with photos. Very similar to a Facebook post, here's a tweet. You'll find at the top the post text, and you can see here that I've included a short link, as well as a couple hashtags. You'll find the media in the center as well, and at the bottom you'll find your engagement and analytics bar. You can reply to a tweet, retweet or share a tweet, and like a tweet. On the far right, you'll see three bars representing a bar graph. This is your analytics button. Twitter allows all users, individuals, organizations, or businesses alike to view social media metrics for each post they make. So why use social media, especially for chapters and federations? This will allow you to keep in contact with your members between events, as well as allow those members to keep in contact with each other as well. Social media is a great way to boost visibility for your brand, your chapter or federation, or a specific issue that's important to NARF. And lastly, social media is a free, easy outreach tool to find new audiences. The first step in creating your personal Facebook account is to go to facebook.com and click the green Create New Account button. Clicking this button will cause a pop-up message to appear where you can enter your name, email address or mobile phone number, password, your birth date, and gender. After this, you'll click Sign Up. Depending on which form of communication you decided to use, Clicking that button will initiate one of two things. If you chose email, you'll receive an email with a code and a link. You can either choose to enter that code into the next screen or click the link in the email. 
If you chose your phone number, you'll receive a text message with the code you can enter on the next screen. Once you've confirmed your contact information and logged in, follow the prompts on your page to add a profile photo and as much or as little detail as you like. I would like to note that if you plan to use your account for advocacy, we recommend that you use your real name and photo. This will make you look more credible. Adjust your privacy settings. This will allow you to keep your personal posts private and your advocacy posts public. And you'll also want to keep any posts or comments that you make on Facebook professional. Now, we'll go over how to set up a Twitter. A Twitter account is the same for both an individual or a business. And the first step you'll do is go to twitter.com and click sign up. This will cause a pop-up box to appear where you'll enter your name, email address or mobile number, and your date of birth. Click Next. This next page will ask you to check or uncheck permission for Twitter to track your data across the internet. This allows them to offer you a more customized experience with their algorithm. Just like on Facebook, you'll be asked to confirm the contact information you entered, whether it be an email or a mobile phone number. Enter the code you receive in your email or text message and click Next. On the next screen, you'll be allowed to choose a password. Do that and click Next. Click on the camera icon on your new Twitter profile to upload a profile picture and then follow the prompts to add as much or as little detail as you like, following the same recommendations that we had for Facebook. Twitter has a special step that you'll need to take to make your profile look more credible. On the menu bar on the left, you'll look toward the bottom for more. Click on that, and then you'll click account information and enter your password again if required. Next, you'll click Username, and this will allow you to create your unique Twitter handle or the name that you will use on Twitter. Click Save. Now that we've gone over creating accounts, let's talk a little bit about hashtags and why you should use them in your posts. So a hashtag is a word or phrase preceded by the pound or number symbol. These searchable tags are used to link posts to specific conversations or topics, incorporating your post into the ongoing discussions on that social media platform. So why use hashtags? They're a great way to help build awareness for an issue or an event. They also will lead to increased engagement. Posts with hashtags are much more likely to be engaged with by your audience than post without. Hashtags also allow you to add your voice to a conversation that's already happening. You can also use them to show support for issues you care about. You can also use hashtags to find related topics and discussions to those that you're participating in currently. Now we'll talk about building a chapter or federation page on Facebook. From your personal account, visit facebook.com slash pages slash create, which you'll see below. I want to make a special note that only official representatives should create a page for an organization. For chapters and federations, this should be a designated social media chair or officer. On that page, enter your page name. For federations, you should follow the guidelines of NARF, your state, and federation. Chapters should follow the guidelines of NARF, chapter, and then your chapter number. Next, under category, you'll enter nonprofit organization. Under description, you'll include your page name with the sentence serves NARF members in your own chapter or federation territory. Click Create Page. On the next screen, add your official logo as a profile picture and choose a cover photo.
click save. This will cause your new page to appear on the right with a management toolbar on the left. Scroll down in the toolbar and click Edit Page Info. Under this page, you should complete the information in the General tab. For username, you should follow the, these naming conventions. Federations should use NARF, their state abbreviation, and federation with no spaces. Chapters should use NARF, chapter, and their chapter number also with no spaces. Next, you'll want to complete the information in the Contact tab. If applicable, add a phone number for your federation or chapter. You'll also want to create an official email address, such as narfchapter1234 at gmail.com, or add an address for a page administrator who, re who regularly monitors that inbox. Next, under the Location tab, if possible, add a city or a zip code. If not, click My Page Doesn't Have a Location. That information is included in your description. Next, you'll skip the Hours tab and move to the More tab. In the Additional Information box, include details about how to join NARF in your own chapter or federation. And then under Price Range, select Not Applicable. Just like all forms of communication, social media is governed by an unspoken set of rules that other users expect each other to follow. And while each platform does have its own specific considerations, today we're going to go over a universal list of social media do's and don'ts. You'll want to start off by being authentic and genuine, both in your profile and in your posts. You want to post regularly. Consistent posting is the quickest way to build a following and the easiest way to increase engagement. Interact positively with others. If you have something negative to say, it's probably better to keep it to yourself. And that goes right along with thinking before you post. If you wouldn't say something out loud or wouldn't say something to someone in person, you probably shouldn't say it on social media either. And that goes right along with treating others how you wish to be treated. This will ensure that everyone has the best experience they can on social media. And now for the don'ts. You don't want to be overly promotional. Remember it's important to stay authentic and genuine. And while it's important to post regularly, you don't want to post too much. Your followers will get annoyed and simply scroll past your posts. You also never want to tag anyone in a photo or video without their permission, especially if it involves children. Next, while it's great to use hashtags, you shouldn't overuse them. It makes them less effective. And lastly, you should make sure that your posts are free of any spelling or grammatical errors before you post. It's okay to make a mistake every now and then, but it shouldn't be all the time. Thank you for participating in part one of the Social Media Quick Start Training. My name is Evan Dean, and I'm the Digital Communications Manager at NARF. You can feel free to send me any questions you have by email at the address on screen. That's edean at narf.org. Thanks again.